Hello, Docker Con attendees. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Now, today I'm going to be talking about the evolution of tracing in containerized environments. As we view it at Epsigon, strong and easy to implement distributed tracing is absolutely critical in modern environments today. Now, my name is Devin Lawler, and I head up sales engineering here at Epsigon. I have nearly a decade of experience architecting distributed applications and solutions in both on-premises environments and in cloud environments as well. Now, I've been working in observability, ops, and monitoring for quite a number of years now, and honestly, I truly love working in this space. Now, this is me here about 15 minutes after my wedding wrap this past November. Thankfully, we were able to just eke out uh, the COVID crisis we're all now unfortunately dealing with today. So today we're gonna to focus on three main points though. The growth we've seen in containerized environments and really the challenges that's presented us all. I'm sure as many of you have begun to adopt more and more microservices and containers, the standard metrics that once worked well in monoliths are leaving gaps in your observability strategy today. Additionally, observability and how distributed tracing fits into this, as well as how we at Epsigon are approaching this in modern environments. And lastly, monitoring and troubleshooting best practices. So Docker truly helped bring about a new era for developers. In the early 2000s, as developers began looking at ways to increase velocity and further modernize their applications, service-oriented architectures started to grow in popularity. Now, service-oriented architectures were really the first shift that we saw towards microservices. However, they still came with their own challenges. Collaborating with other engineers meant needing exact mirror copies of environments which could be costly and time-consuming to configure and maintain, especially as teams grow in size. Now, let's really fast forward the clocks to 2013 when Docker debuted. Docker was lightweight and meant development environments could now be maintained locally by packaging together only the libraries necessary to run an application. A developer who preferred Linux could now easily share their application with a teammate who maybe preferred OS X, and later on, even ones who preferred Windows. For the business, this not only meant less costly resources by managing and running virtual machines for development, but also a significant increase in developer velocity and productivity. From pre-production, we then witnessed the rise of containerized applications in production environments across the enterprise. Gartner research has shown that by 2023, more than 70% of global organizations will be running more than two containerized applications in production. Now, this may not sound like a lot, but that's actually up from less than 20% in 2019, which is an absolutely massive paradigm shift. But how do we get to where we are today? Now, if we look at it and think about it, the technical world and landscape that we work within is becoming increasingly complex and distributed. With over 86% of enterprises adopting microservices as their default architectures, it means that the monitoring tools we once relied on are now ineffective at providing the rich troubleshooting data engineers and DevOps professionals need to be efficient with their jobs. Now, services are traversing a mixture of serverless and microservice components running in containers across ecosystems like Kubernetes or even ECS, for instance. And these services can touch dozens to thousands of ent entities with intermingled third-party external APIs and managed services as well. So how can you pinpoint issues and become proactive with your observability to allow engineers to focus on what matters most, that being the business? Now, these new and highly complex environments cause significant challenges across teams. Instead of leveraging a traditional APM solution that works fantastic for client-server applications, we now have thousands of services with intermingled databases, message queues, caches, and more that we have to consider, all within observability. Now, each layer can also have its own independent and unique SLAs and SLOs to be defined as well. So how can we have a single pane of glass to not only troubleshoot issues as they're occurring, but also spot inefficiencies quickly to optimize and iterate on top of our existing solutions to provide end users with a better experience? So. I'm sure we all have heard of the three pillars of observability at this point. Now, these are also more commonly being referred to as melt these days. This being events, rather, this being metrics, events, logs, and traces. 
So metrics are really a great way for ops to figure out if something has gone wrong. So maybe latency has increased above a uh, certain threshold, or maybe error saturation has increased beyond a given percentage. Logs and events tell us what went wrong. However, they lack critical context and oftentimes require significant manual toil. So sifting through thousands to millions of log lines or having to rely on proprietary query languages becomes a painful endeavor when needing to do even basic troubleshooting. So tracing allows us to see exactly where something went wrong. Distributed architectures leveraging thousands of containers can be absolutely chaotic and downtime and latency can cost us thousands of dollars. Google has actually discovered that sites or apps with 3.7 seconds of latency will see an incredibly high bounce rate. However, tracing really hasn't been figured out just yet and has largely required a incredible developer effort, which can account for upwards of 25% of additional time or proprietary tracing reliant on heavy agents, which utilize invasive bytecode instrumentation. So this means manual code changes and instrumentation or running and managing yet another binary that can possibly not scale in containerized environments or is otherwise impossible in serverless environments altogether. So traditional monitoring solutions come at the expense of higher resource utilization, have the ability to only collect host metrics, or are purely a metric-driven solution only. The very nature of Docker means this is likely to leave you gaps in coverage with your observability strategy. And metrics that we've discussed really only let us know that something has broken, but not the where or the why. Context is absolutely critical in today's environments. And to effectively troubleshoot, we need more data. But are logs sufficient? And what gaps in coverage are most often seen when relying only on logs for troubleshooting? Now, I'm not here to tell you or begin saying that logs aren't needed at all, or that troubleshooting with them is an absolutely futile endeavor. Logs can be incredibly powerful tools within your troubleshooting arsenal, but they of course do come with an added cost, which is both monetarily and operationally. Logs oftentimes require yet another agent to be installed and managed within your environment. And oftentimes you're having to define local grok patterns or regexes to hopefully match on specific patterns within logs. Now, furthermore, they can be incredibly expensive when accounting for data egress costs out of cloud environments to log aggregators. You also have to hope that developers have accounted for properly logging out the data that will be helpful when troubleshooting, which means there's a huge potential for spotty troubleshooting data, or conversely, too much data causing paralysis from overanalysis. Now, logs also lack key context, which is critical to metrics, events, and traces requiring engineers to manually search and scroll through millions of lines to hopefully spot the why and then the where of a failure. Before the days of distributed tracing, I really remember personally spending hours of my time scrolling through logs, searching for potential exceptions, and hoping I'd be able to spot that needle in the haystack. This context is always key with any type of data point. So how can we ensure that we're correlating metrics and logs, and how do we further correlate that data between all of the distributed services within your environment? You know, surely there has to be a better way. So. This brings us to distributed tracing. Really, it's a more modern application performance monitoring or APM solution. And I'm sure you're all hearing a lot about tracing lately. Many vendors offer some form of distributed tracing and even many service meshes are now building in support for it natively. There are also dozens of open source solutions, some of which are born out of huge enterprises as well. However, where did it begin and why? So distributed tracing was actually born out of Google over a decade ago, and it allows engineers to trace the specific path a request makes through services. In effect, it helps shine a light on that needle in the haystack that logging or metrics alone can miss. So just because your application is made up of 15,000 services really doesn't mean a request is going to travel through every single one of them. You know, at best, it will travel through maybe a fraction of those services. And beyond this, distributed tracing becomes a fantastic way to start determining where in your stack time is being spent. If it's taking two seconds for a response, is that due to time being spent in database query? Or is a service perhaps taxed on memory and unable to be as performant as we would like? And with distributed tracing, you then had frameworks like Jaeger or Zipkin and others that came about. 
Now, some order was ultimately brought to this landscape with the introduction of open tracing and open telemetry. These are standards and frameworks that are to be followed and utilized, though, while they're immensely helpful in pinpointing issues in those highly distributed environments, they do come with significant development effort, slowing down that key developer velocity that we all hope for. Furthermore, these oftentimes lack the visualizations necessary to trace the exact path a request travels, limiting you to flame or waterfall graphs for troubleshooting. Additionally, they lack key context with metrics and logs and don't necessarily provide you with the ability to search for and identify specific data within your API calls. As I mentioned, these standards also slow down developers as they now have to pause to remember to account for defining spans and segments within their services. And this really does become a truly costly endeavor. The traditional mechanism utilizing headers to propagate between services can also introduce additional latency or can provide an incomplete picture if those headers are stripped out and lost along the way. These also require you to inject and extract IDs to be able to correlate the relevant metrics to the logging data too. And all of this data must be kept somewhere. And with open standards, you're suddenly now running and scaling an observability platform internally as well. So let's go ahead and shift gears for a moment here and take a look at what this would all look like within our platform, Epsigon. So starting here with the service map, one that is a little bit more geared towards a serverless environment. However, this can be entirely mixed. So I can have services running in containers, communicating through SQS with data being consumed by another Lambda function and then being pushed to a database. It is all entirely automatically drawn for you as well within here. So there's no need to have to start tagging individual resources or tagging various entities to know that that's what the communication channel looks like. By instrumenting with Epsigon's agents, all of this is automatically propagated directly into our system for you. Now, not only are we showing you synchronous communication, but also asynchronous communication between all of these components as well. This way, we can pinpoint exactly where latency or errors are occurring within an environment. Now, switching over to more of a simplified containerized environment here as well, we can see that we have a few points of latency or other SLAs that were passed within this uh, within the service map here. Now, within a service map, it's also important to be able to pinpoint exactly what the immediate upstream and downstream implications of a failure or an outage can be. So by hovering over a given component and getting access to that higher level metric data, I can right click and then focus the view on down. So I've now taken all of that noise out of my, my view here. And again, I can see the immediate upstream and downstream components that are being interfered with here. Additionally, I wanna be able to see what this metric data looks like over time. So by clicking on a given component, I can now see how many successes and errors we've had on a day by day or even an hour by hour basis. This way, if we happen to do a new deployment and I'm suddenly seeing a huge uptick in the number of errors, I can track that back to the deployment and then begin rolling back. Additionally, we wanna pinpoint what the average duration for transactions is and really be able to start understanding where time is being spent within these components as well. However, this is really a macro view. So this is the entire picture of an application, which as I mentioned, can be comprised of dozens to thousands of services. So we wanna be able to go from this view to more of a micro view showing the exact path that a trace for an end user takes through each one of those service components. So by clicking on traces, it brings us into a scope down view, applying some filters automatically for me for the proper resource and application. Additionally, I could add any additional AWS native tags or custom labels that I've appended onto my applications as well. I can also start to visualize different metrics within this platform. If I scroll down here, I can start to start, start seeing what is propagating through our individual services here. So now I can see a scope down view of an HTTP post that's occurring through a load balancer on down to our spring web service running in a container, really a producer and consumer pushing data into Kafka. This also is giving me all of that rich context to all of the metadata and really that payload data which I also have the full ability to search through. Now, when I've identified issues, maybe specific to a user, I wanna have the ability to filter on that within this view as well. So being that we're collecting that full payload data, 
I have the ability to search through any of these specific key value pairs that are going to be helpful for troubleshooting, or additionally, any custom labels that I've appended on to these traces as well. So perhaps on our back end, we see that there was a ticket automatically open for user ID 123. And I want to take a look at only errors that have occurred for that specific user. I can apply a filter and set that to true. Now I can apply these filters to the search and see every single error that's occurred within this environment. Now at Epsigon, we don't believe in sampling. So there are no requirements around sampling the data that we're ingesting. So when I see that there are a large swath of errors that occurred here, if we scroll up here, I can actually see that there were in total 355 on May 18th. That is the true end-to-end -end picture within our platform. Now by clicking through, I again can see what that end-to-end -end request looks like but now for any failures, I get that critical troubleshooting information. So I get a stack trace and the ability to then pull in the log. So again, context to metrics, events, logs, and traces all within one unified view without ever having to leave Epsigon. Now, additionally, if we have to compare between multiple traces, perhaps now a successful and an error trace, I can simply remove this filter for errors, click apply here, and now I can go ahead and open up a successful trace and I still maintain context for my error out trace here. So again, I now get the entire business flow of what that trace looked like, starting with that post request on down to a final Lambda function. And again, these service maps can be entirely mixed within your own environment between serverless as well as traditional components running in containers or VMs as well. Now for users leveraging uh, orchestration tools like ECS or Kubernetes, we also wanna be able to start pulling in the metric data for clusters, nodes, containers, as well as visualizing deployment sets. However, we not only wanna be able to pull in that infrastructure data, we also wanna be able to marry that up with all of the tracing data within our platform too. So within my pods, I can immediately click on one of these pods. Again, have a filter automatically appended for me here. And now I can see every single trace that's flown through that specific container. Again, I can dive in here and I can see that end-to-end -end context of exactly what flow or rather what direction that trace took through each service component that it touched. Now for any of the middleware, message queues, databases, all of those components, we can instrument all of them all without requiring any agent to be running, pointed at them, listening for events. Our agents are smart enough to start picking up events running through Kafka, any SQL databases, NoSQL, as well as many, many other components that are out there. And we also want to be able to manage all of those incidents that are occurring all within one centralized location. So in the event any Kubernetes metrics or application specific metrics are surpassed, we want to be able to keep a running record of how often those are, occur those are occurring within the environment as well as be able to assign those out to members of the team. However, oftentimes there can be gaps in alerting strategies. So for our users, we wanna be able to call that out all within one centralized platform. And these alerts are intelligent and can be going out to multiple channels, such as a uh, single alert going out to Slack, while also opening up an incident in ServiceNow with various other integrations to alerting platforms that are out there. Now, beyond having context with metrics, events, logs, and traces, it is also key to be able to have a flexible and customized tagging strategy within your traces. So as we saw a moment ago, Epsigon will ingest all native AWS tags for quick filtering, and we also allow you to customize tags and labels that can be applied for more advanced filtering on any criteria that might be helpful in further scoping the impact as well as the location of a problem. Now, this could be a tag based upon a specific environment, a build, or even an identifier for an A-B test, or as we saw a moment ago, a user's email address. At Epsigon, we also believe our users should have full visibility into the payload. So whether they need to search through specific key value pairs from the HTTP requests or response headers or the body, or be able to spot inefficient SQL queries being made, this data is all fully searchable and easily visualized within our traces view. We also empower the users or really the engineers to determine what data ends up within our platform. 
So we have the ability to whitelist or blacklist specific key value pairs. We're also completely enable or disable metadata collection. And all of that data remains safely encrypted within our backends. Now, if we think about it, distributed tracing really becomes the glue that allows you to stitch together the context of what, where, when, and why something is negatively impacting your production or even various pre-production environments. This allows you to take out not only the guesswork, but the hours of manual toil that can be spent troubleshooting. Now, let's talk about some of the best practices around general observability strategies. So, Observability really should be top of mind for every organization by now, but it should not come at the expense of the business or developer velocity and efficiencies too. So here at Epsigon, we take a fully automated approach with our instrumentation with minimal maintenance requirements. Our agents can collect data from any component within your stack, whether that's a service running in a container, a function as a service, or again, traditional VMs while stitching together transactions through databases and middleware without requiring separate agents to be pointed at those components and monitor them. Now, we're able to do all of this with rich context across metrics, events, logs, and traces, and allow you to search that full payload or any of those custom tags and labels. So obser observability should not only tell you that something has gone wrong, but it should pinpoint where and why to help you reduce things like your mean time to detection and further reduce your mean time to resolution. So modern distributed applications and containerized workloads require more than just monitoring for the web transaction time or the error rate. They need to be able to pinpoint that needle in the haystack for us. Distributed tracing is absolutely crucial in today's modern environments, but again, it should not come at the expense of managing your own observability platforms or going through that toil of manual instrumentation. So, for all of the DockerCon attendees today, please absolutely do feel free to sign up for a free trial of our solution. And once you do send your first trace to our platform, we'll send you a uh, cloud observability drone. So something fun for, for all of us to be able to play with outside uh, while we're still unfortunately stuck in quarantine. And we certainly would like to thank you all again so much for your time today. From all of us at Epsigon, we certainly do hope that you stay safe and healthy through this absolutely trying time. Please do feel free to follow up with us. Ask any questions that you may have in the chat box. We'll be monitoring that. Again, thank you so very much.